No, I'm sorry. The title of this video is not clickbait. The market is going to tank. You're going to need to sell everything. And if you are not able to react fast enough, which I'm going to try and help you do in this video, you are going to lose all your gains. In fact, you could probably go into negatives and lose all your money, especially if you bought recently. And what I'm going to give you in this video is probably single-handedly the most important thing you need to know how to be able to do in crypto. If you do not get this right, if you do not understand and take away what I'm gonna lay in this video, if you do not take the 20 minutes to watch this, you are probably going to lose everything in crypto. If you recently bought, you're gonna go into the negatives. Last bull run, only 15% of people that I pulled left with any kind of profits whatsoever. Everybody else lost all their profits or went into the red. So if you're watching this, there's about a one in 10 chance you're gonna be one of those people that walks with money. And I wanna maximize this video by showing you guys what I've seen in the markets that have allowed me to leave with a lot of profits consistently and consistently not nail tops, but get pretty damn close. Because while I don't think the market is going to tank this week or in the next month, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm eating 40 oranges a day to keep the superstition going, but we don't know when it's gonna happen. So what we need to talk about is we need to have really good selling strategies going into this bull market if we get one. And I've taken the sunglasses off. I've dropped the persona because Every few weeks, we need to just have one of these kind of come to Jesus videos. We need to sit around the campfire, stop flexing, stop yelling cuckold jokes at Cardano. Holders, we need to have a chat because you guys get a little bit too excited sometimes. Look, I know these gains. Oh, oh, they're great. They're great. It's so much fun going to the bar on weekends and flexing on all your buddies, but it's going to stop. It's all going to go sideways. Everyone's going to lose all their money just like they did in last bull market. And there's going to be very few survivors left. I want you to be one of those survivors. So old daddy Bex. Old 35-year-old ancient Alex Becker, I'm gonna pull you aside, young Padawan. I'm gonna show you how to sell correctly, how to make sure you leave in profit or at least give yourself the best possible chance. And I know you come to this channel to see my muscles and me scream poop jokes, but we're gonna have to put that aside today. Okay, maybe just a little bit. So, let's imagine you're going up a ladder and you hear a splatter. You know what that means? Die! Also, Cardano holders, wives bang other men. Are we good now? Are you are you properly entertained before I talk about saving your entire life savings? Good, you 10 year olds. Let's move into this. Actually, let's not move into this. Let me shamelessly show you my Twitter and Instagram because if you wanna get updates on what I think's going on in the market, maybe specifically when I think it's time to start looking at taking profits in the market, you should follow me on Twitter at CSS Becker because I'm gonna put a big red flag out that says, sell everything, dump it all on your grandma. No, I'm not gonna do that, but we're gonna talk about when it's time to maybe start getting a little bit serious about not losing all of our money. And why should you listen to me on this? If you go and look at my call history, specifically in gaming crypto, I am terrible at calling Bitcoin. If I ever post a Bitcoin prediction, just, just do the opposite, you'll be good. But when it comes to actually calling the things we actually trade on this channel, I pretty much nailed the tops and the bottoms almost every single time. Maybe I'll mess it up in the future now that I've smacked it on wood, but I have a pretty good track record here. And if you had gotten in when I said to get in a month ago, you'd be doing pretty well. But more so, last bull run, if you'd gone out when I said, hey, this looks overheated, let's go, you would have left with about 90% of your profits. So if that sounds good to you, keeping your money and not ending up like those poor, poor Cardano holders, this is the right place to be. Listen up. So first, let's talk about selling because no one thinks about selling in crypto. They think about buying, buying, buying. I'm gonna tell you straight up, in a bull market, Anybody can make money by buying. Buying is the easiest thing in the entire world. If you go look at any of our calls that we've done the past month, C to five is up like 400%. Beam has gone insane. Our calls in the channel have actually done incredibly well. We've This last month has been absolutely nuts. Why is that? I'm a golden god. Get used to it. I'm good at everything. That's why you're here. If in the next life, if you get the chance to re-roll as Alex Becker as your class, it's a good class to pick. We have great talent trees. But what you need to focus on is while our gains in the channel have been better than other people's too torn everybody is up right now everyone in the market is doing very very well regardless of what gaming coin you picked unless you like you really went out of your way to pour battery acid on your dick like you really couldn't mess up you're up 150 200 percent in most cases across gaming if you got into all these mainstream top coins i mean if you got an avax like i told you to in the top coins you'd be up like 400 percent. but i'm not here to toot my horn or remind you how good my calls are but 
if you look at all the top coins right here, you're doing great no matter what. Heck, you could even bought Cardano and you're like feeling pretty proud of yourself. I mean, if they can just get back to $1.50, which they're getting close to, they're getting close to, their wives might even stop dating other men. It, it would be great. And their, their kids might stop calling them by their first name. And they might even be allowed to come like and pee in the house and stuff instead of having to go outside like the neighborhood dog. But they're not there yet, but let's let's keep up hope for these guys because that's, that's something we don't wish on any man. But regardless of what you picked, you're doing good. Everyone's doing good. How could things possibly go wrong? Because they always do in crypto. If you're new to this, you need to understand, like I just said, 85% of people leave with negative or no profits whatsoever. So again, your chances are, I'm gonna put in the below 10% because I think a lot of people were lying in that poll. Your chances are below 10%, you're actually gonna leave with money here. Because just like in the bear, the hardest time to buy in the bear is the best time. The hardest time to sell in the bull is the best time. You're not going to want to sell. They were going to hit the top. Everyone's going to be showing off their phones. Everyone's going to say we have another 50, 200%. Retail's about to come here. We're going to dump on them. This is just getting started. We're so early. And then the market's going to dip and it's just never going to come back. And so the most important thing in a bull market is you're going to follow the people that are buying and getting gains. They're not going to keep them. The most important thing is the people who are selling. The number one skill you can have in crypto is selling. You are not going to make any money if you don't know how to sell. You can do everything right. Pick every right coin. And if you do not sell on time what is going to happen is just like last bear market people in solana got amazingly up so up oh my gosh what the heck is going on here up and then they lost all their money they took a nice 90 percent loss and a lot of people bought around here so these people went super in debt they lost their money they got eaten alive and so in this video i'm going to give you the best chance of being a survivor because i've been a survivor many times here this is my first rodeo i've also been a casualty and so I want to explain both those points to you so this doesn't happen to you. Because I really want you to get this. Despite all the things you see on Twitter, despite all the things you see influencers saying, crypto is a fully solo PvP game. The only way, for example, if we go and look at Solana right here, the only way these people who bought Solana right here left with these profits was taking all the money of the people right here. Okay, they didn't, they didn't just come and there was some golden pot that just gave them lottery ticket money. No, what happened is they bought right here, tons of people put money right here, and then these people right here took all the money out of it. It's a giant pot where everybody takes money in and out of. I think if you know the basics of investing, you know that, but a lot of people in crypto don't, don't think like this. Why don't they think like this? It's because what you're going to see, and I have to disillusion you, this is the first step to selling, is you have to stop being disillusioned by crypto. What you are seeing on Twitter, people talking about the tech, how well this coin's gonna do, where it's going in the future. Look, there's a lot of cool tech in crypto and I like a whole lot of it, but what we're essentially seeing right here is a bunch of MLMs just like Herbal Life. These are people saying whatever it takes, whatever narrative it wants, and eventually narrative gets so big that people don't even understand why they are saying these things. These are all talking points, all buzzwords made up by the original people that made the coin. They want everyone to buy the coin, and then this person does it, and then all they're telling everybody else the next thing to get them to them buy the coin, even if they're not doing it consciously. It's literally like a herbal life rep saying, oh, this protein powder is so good, it's so good, it's so good. The second you buy it, it's not about the protein powder at all. It's about selling more of it. You're, witnessing, you're not witnessing a bunch of really smart people getting into new tech and changing the world. You're witnessing the definition of cult-like behavior and self-delusion happening in crypto. So you have to separate yourself away from that and just look at it what it is. In most cases, these are people getting into Ponzi schemes and MLMs. That's what they have more in common with. Again, there's tons of cool tech in there, but crypto functions very well in this way. And what they're doing is they're trying to amplify a message that makes them rich so that they can then, at the end of the day, they're going to then take their money out or hold the bag to bomb. There's, what, what happens right here is a bunch of people buy into this narrative so much and then they just, they perma hold. Because these are the people that just, because these are the people that really drink the Kool-Aid right here. And everybody from down here just takes all their money. You cannot be one of these people. So the rule number one of selling is the first thing you must do is not get disillusioned. Keep a nice jaded mindset and realize what you're looking at. Again, I love a lot of the products in. I think the technology is so cool. I think they're going to get overvalued at some point. I think people are going to buy them and put all these buzzwords out there and all these things and all these narratives that have nothing to do with the product. They don't even know what they're buying. They're just gonna be buying it to the moon. And if you were part of that, you are going to die. You are going to lose all your money. So that's the first step to understanding how to sell. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. And then you need to understand what it's gonna look like when crypto crashes. So the second piece of Kool-Aid that you're going to get in the markets is everybody's going to tell you they're looking for this nice exit opportunity, this clear exit sign. And so what everybody likes to 
f***ing think. It's so stupid. And sorry if I get a little frustrated here. It's just it's so hard sometimes seeing people being such goddamn f***ing idiots. But what everybody thinks happens at the end of a bull market is it's like a, a giant welfare check. And you just, you, you the bull market comes and then this obvious sign flashes. And then people come and buy all your bags as you just casually say, oh, there's the sign. And you just casually walk out with your giant life-changing check. There's, there's no rush. There's no hurry. You just... Duh, and you just get to keep all your money. That is exactly the opposite of how it happens. So let's talk about the 2021 bull and that crash. Okay, let me tell you what it was like to be there. So I was in both of these and I actually was a casualty in this one. So I want to talk about my mistakes and then not my mistakes. So I bought during the COVID dip. And so I made a lot of money on this rise up right here. But then Elon Musk tweeted something mean about Bitcoin. That's all it took by the way. And Bitcoin went and took a massive dive. And so I had been, I made all these profits and I was rolling into the other coins. And so I'd sell one mid cap and I'd roll it into like AVAX or Luna or something like that. And then it would come down. And so I had all my money stored in big cap coins right here. These all took a nice 50% dive. And I'm like, oh, oh, it's terrible. And then I, I panic sold it a lot right here. Okay. So I made some good money, but I mean, I, I, did, I lost 50% of my gains, which, which stings. Again, there was no warning sign right here. There wasn't some obvious top. It wasn't like Elon like sent out a, like a telegram email. It was like, hey, you know, I'm not so hot on this Bitcoin thing anymore. It just started dipping. And then it just came all the way back. And so everyone's like, ah, oh, bull market, 100K Bitcoin. And so again, if you went to any YouTube channel, you went on Twitter, they're saying, look for the blow off top. Look for the, are they using all the past bull cycles? That's the other thing you're going to see tons of times. They're going to look at other bull cycles and say, well, this happened here. So this is going to happen here. And this has happened three times. So it's going to happen again. It never ever goes like that. You're not going to see some clear blow off top sign. And so at this point right here, everybody, every influence in their dog is like, oh, just wait for the blow off top. Wait for the blow off top. Wait for the blow off top. It's okay. It's going to be super obvious. Just wait for the blow off top and collect your welfare check. Didn't happen. We went up. We got casually up to 64K. Everyone's like, 100K is in the books. Here it comes. Or wait for the blow off top. If it jumps to 90K, that's when you sell. Never happened. It just casually went up here and then it started dipping and it felt like another dip because we see these all the time. On these in these markets we see dips all the time and after this one people had balls of steel they're like Haha, i have correctly called the future of finance and it just dipped and then it just never stopped dipping it just kept dipping it kept dipping and then we had the luna crash and all the things right here and it just it's like a slippery little slope and so you slowly see all your gains evaporate and you think just a dip just a dip just a dip and then it just dips really hard and you lose 50 60 70 percent of your money that's how it's going to happen. So you're not going to see these things happen and it's not going to follow a predictable pattern. Maybe it will do a blow off sudden top and then you'll be like, oh, now no, it's going a million dollars now or something like that. Or it's just, I don't think it will because everybody looks for the blow off top or you're going to look for it to impersonate some other uh, bull run. It's not going to happen like that either because people are all using the same information. So please get that through your head. No matter what you see on Twitter, no matter what you see on YouTube, no one is going to give you, there's not going to be some clear sell sign. Those are going to be the basic mistakes you're going to make. And what we need to do is we need to find a way to still do well here, even if we can't call the top or we can't see it coming. That's what we have to do. We have to come up with some strategy to do that because there's no TA in the world that's going to do that. And the big mistakes everybody sees, just to recap, is they look, they think there's going to be some clear exit signal. They drink the Kool-Aid, they look at past markets, or God forbid they start using TA. They're, I'm not gonna poop on people that use TA, but if TA could predict things like people say TA can, the people that know how to do TA would be billionaires. But they're not, they're posting their TA on Twitter. Because let me be straight with you guys. If, if I had some magic fortune telling line drawing machine to allow me to predict the future, I would be worth billions of dollars and I wouldn't be making videos or running my companies or investing in crypto. I'd be just in the Philippines in some dungeon making million dollar tigers fight each other. Okay, don't don't screen cap that video. That's not what I plan to do with any amount of money I make. All right, this Pete is going to be like this guy. He's trying to make money so we can have tigers fight each other. Look, we're not going to do that. Maybe pandas though. But look, look, just don't get disillusioned and thinking you can call this. So how do we get out of here alive? How do, we, how do we do well in these markets when we can't call the top? How do we know when the right time to sell is? So first and foremost, the reason why I'm using Bitcoin right here is you have to recognize that Bitcoin controls the market. It is, it's not something I invest in. For various reasons, this isn't a video where I talk about the problems with Bitcoin or why I don't invest in Bitcoin. We can just sum it up to it doesn't make enough money. The multiples suck on it. So that being said, you have to understand and watch Bitcoin like a hawk 
because it's the music in the room. When Bitcoin stops dancing, all the everything else goes down. You know, usually Ethereum peaks like a month or two after, altcoins peak shortly after, and then the market just nukes. And so if you, you're looking at this right here, here's the peak of Bitcoin, and Ethereum peaked like right around here, okay? So they're kind of wonky with how they interact. I already talked about that in the microcap trading video. So that's something to look for when you're actually trying to make money. But as I use this chart right here, always realize I'm talking about mid caps and micro cap coins and gaming coins and the smaller coins we like to trade on this channel. Okay, I'm never directly talking about Bitcoin when I talk about Bitcoin. So how do we go and get out of this market correctly? The first thing you have to do is understand that you're going to miss out on gains. You are not going to keep your gains unless you're okay losing and missing out on games. If you are following FOMO or I'm going to hold one more time and hold more and more time. It's just like that movie, The Gambler, where Mark Wahlberg wins like a million dollars gambling and then doubles down and he makes $2 million and he doubles down and makes $4 million and he doubles down and loses all of it. That's exactly what happens in crypto. The, the more you're willing to double down, the more FOMO you're going to have. But, oh, the next hand, the next hand could be something good. The higher chance you're going to lose money. So we have to find a selling pattern that works. So what is this magical selling pattern? I'm, I'm going to be straight with you. It's nothing that creative. When we see mid caps and micro caps pump, we need to do a few things with them. There's, there's a few different ways we sell. I'm going to break down each one. One, we have to know about the coin. I know it's crazy, but nobody actually knows about the coins they buy. And so what happens when people don't know about the things they buy is you have to know, more importantly, what makes them go up and what makes them go down. Why are they going up? What narrative is making them going up? What views do people have that's making this coin go up right now? So for example, in the 2021 bull run, there was this one micro cap that was zooming up, zooming up, zooming up, and everyone kept foaming and foaming and foaming into it. And I, I sold all of it. I dumped all of it right there, even though it's one of my favorite projects. And why did I do this? Why did I make this sudden thing? Because the reason it was going up is because this company should have been worth like, I don't know, 100 million last bull run. And it shot to that point. And then another influencer started posting and going nuts about it, just pumping it as hard as he possibly could. And it went all the way to $300 million. And so what I did is I said, this is a fair valuation. This is, this is completely due to this influencer pumping this. So I dumped it all down because I knew what they're doing. I knew where they were in the market. Easy. So that's a fair example right there. Everybody else that was investing right here, they thought they're investing in the future of financing technology. They're not. So that's a very basic example of knowing what's going on with a coin. So if you have a billion different coins, you're not going to know when to do these things. So what we need to do is we need to know about the coin, what's going on with it most importantly, because we're not going to wait till that very end of the market. We're going to be selling up and down the entire way through. Next thing we need to know is we know what, what time in the market is. Okay, so where are we in this market cycle? And then we just need to look at the overall gains. Okay, so whenever we're looking at the gain on any coin, what we're going to first look at is we're going to, we need to know about the coin, period. I already explained that situation right there. Why is this thing pumping? Right now in the market, everything is pumping because all these coins were really high last market those are the ones we're seeing pumping and gaming right now now we're really really low and so they're starting to approach their old all-time highs they're like one eighth of the way there right now so there's a long journey to go there's a lot of gains to be had but because of that we know that the reason why a lot of these coins are going up right now is they're reaching back to their fair bull market valuations none of the valuations in crypto are appropriate by the way they're all overvalued i don't care if this thing is is a little ai coin that, that cures cancer they're all overvalued. None of these things have customers yet. This is, this is ridiculous even at its current point. But in a bull market, these valuations are very low. So please don't get me sitting here being like, oh yeah, this coin it, it has no customers and no business model whatsoever that's worth a billion dollars. That's reasonable. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying in a bull market, that's extremely reasonable due to the market, not so much uh, the, the, the crypto's insanity. Another thing here is logical. We're literally like in the Alice in Wonderland of investing. So please don't ever take what we're doing here seriously. You, you have to look at it in a JD, like satirical view at all times. So the next thing is time. Like where are we in the market? So for example, when I first got into crypto right here, okay, we're going to look at this, this, this initial run up right here. So this little dip right here scared the ever living crap out of me. So it went to 39,000 and it dipped all the way to like 29,000. It like went right underneath that. That scared the crap out of me. Cause if you're new to crypto, um, you, you think, 
holy moly, this is that big crash everybody's thinking about. You always think there's a big crash, and you just you haven't been here long enough to really recognize which are crashes and which are not. Now, the truth is you're never going to really know. But if you're really early in a market, like right here going into this bull market here, it's just it was really silly of me to panic and, and sell right here. So th this is going to be ruled out by the time scenario right here. So right now, if it's a bull run, it's really kind of foolish to be selling any huge dips that happen if we're in a bull run right now. We could not be and we could just go back down. If our thesis is bull run, as the market's going up, we're going to have a bunch of these. Okay, and so as we get into deeper in the market, maybe don't sell the first one, don't sell the second one. But once we get past the Bitcoin all time high and we start seeing these these dips and stuff right here, we're really getting in on the point that the, the, the music is really starting to hit a point where we're in no man's land. We don't know what's going to happen. So this is where our sell patterns have to start getting really on point right here. We really don't want to be doing too much. So understand that. And then finally, we have to look at the potential gains on the coins. So. If we're really early in the bear market and a coin is just skyrocket, probably not time to sell it, especially if the all-time high is like somewhere on the moon up here, okay? Probably not time to sell it. However, if we're deep in the bull market and something is just skyrocketing, and the first time ever it's up, you know, 20x, 5x, 3x, we want to be selling all the way up. But what if we miss out on money? That's the point. It's fine. It's fine. We want to leave with money. Okay, so for example, I had many coins at 30, 50 X dummy, but I didn't get the full 50 X on them because as it, when it 3 X, 5 X dummy, I sold half. When it did another 3 X from there, I sold half. When it kept going up, I sold half. Does that stink that I didn't get the entire 50 X? Yes, but everybody had to wait for the 50 X. They used that strategy waiting for the 100 X. <laughs> it's, it's like a game of bust a bit. It's like a little, it's like a little, is the cat in the box dead or is it not? And it's going to be like, do you want to take your money? You got a 2X. Nah. You want to take your money? You got a 4X. Nah. You want to take your money? You got a 6X. Nah. You want to take your money? You got a 10X. Too bad. It's done. That's how it's going to work. So again, you need to be able to specifically looking at the time in the market and the gains that you are dealing with, make those decisions. So you have to know about the time. The, uh, blah, blah. You have to know about the coin, why it's moving, why it's doing the thing it's doing. You need to know where we are in the market and you need to look at the gains that are coming out of the coin. When you combine all these things together, you can usually get pretty good estimates on the coin. Also, as I'm editing this, I forgot one of the most important things. So I'm going to add it right here in the most unprofessional way. And I'll probably add something like this again later on the video. You also have to understand, and this is common sense, but it's not too common in crypto, is the higher a coin goes up, the more friction it has pushing it down and the more momentum it needs to push it up. So for example, if something's at a $5 million market cap, it is, it's quite easy. We only need $100 million to make this thing 20X. $100 million, that's not that much money in crypto, especially in a bull run, okay? So $5 million to $100 million, quite easy to do. But then just to get a 2X on this thing going forward, we need another $100 million. <clears throat> Okay, and then at this point right here to get another uh, 2x, we need $200 million. And then by the time we're at $400 million, you know, we need another 2x. Uh, we need another $400 million just to get another 2x. And so you have to ask yourself at these points in time, is this much money going to come into this coin? If it's something like AVAX or Ethereum or Bitcoin, $400 million comes in and out left and right. It's not a big deal. Um, but again, those coins suffer from the same exact problem. If something's at $5 billion, in order for us to get a 2X on it, we need another $5 billion. So where the F, if we're dealing in microcaps, is $400 million really coming for this coin? So for example, if we look at a lot of gaming coins or mid-cap coins, the answer is no, there isn't $400 million more million sitting around for this coin. And the reason why people are in these mid-caps in the first place is they want to make these 5, 10 Xs. So at this point in time, the, the chance of getting just a 2X on it, there's a lot of pressure moving it down. And so what most people are going to think is like, you know, I'm, I'm going to take the money right here and redeploy it in coins like this. So we're going to take the, let's say we started with 10,000 and uh, we get all the way to a 20 X instead of waiting to uh, 2X that $200,000, what most people are going to do, including myself, which is like my main selling strategy is redeploy the $200,000 right here and then try and 10 X that again. Okay, that's what we're going to do here. That's how most people think. And so when you're looking at a coin too, you have to look as like, is this market cap 
capped out. Like, does this coin deserve to be a billion dollar coin? Does it deserve to be an $800 million coin? If you're kind of like, uh, let's say it's at $400 million right now. And you're thinking like, uh, I really don't see this as a billion dollar coin. I look at similar coins. I look at coins just like it. A billion dollars is at tops. Okay, so are we going to risk the entire biscuit for 2x or are we going to take our money out and play this, this, this higher return game right here? This is one of the most basic things when it comes to selling and one of the most basic ways people turn into absolute idiots. They see something jump the 400, uh, 400 million or 500 million or something like that from a tiny market cap and they're like, it's going to 10x again. No, you biblical idiot. It is not going to go and get another $5 billion in it and this is some game-breaking coin and you found like the, the, the Messiah, the Luna of the cycle. It's not going to do that. Your chances of that are very low. So don't take the low, low return, low chance. Go back to the high chance, high return. This is one of the most basic things that people do not get in crypto and gets them absolutely ruined. Or at least make consistently good decisions to allow you to leave at the end of the bull run um, and profit. So... First thing we need to do is we need to start looking at when we really need to start thinking about this. So our hypothesis right now is that Bitcoin is going to go into another bull run. So the all-time all -time high is at 60,000. Okay. So my process is if we go into a bull market, everyone thinks we're going to at least 100K or something like that. It's probably stupid to sell if our thesis is, and you have to have a thesis, do we know if this is a confirmed bull market? No, but this is our thesis. We have to stick to it. This is the bet we're making. Okay, so our thesis is that we're going into a bull market. So we at least want to wait till about 50, 55K Bitcoin, be really considering exiting the market at, at all. That's the risk we're going to take right there. Now, once we get past 64K or we go above that, this is when we really need to be taking selling seriously. Like it's, it's time to stop twirling around our dicks and shooting off fireworks. This is where we have to start getting really scared when everybody else starts getting really bullish and drunk. Does this mean the market's over? Not by a long shot. We could see Bitcoin, in my opinion, charged to 150K. And that would be like, oh, well, you know, it, it just has to get to the market cap of gold. And I think the mark, I think it at like the market cap of gold, what's it at right now? That would be an 8X from here. So we're looking at like a multiple $100,000 Bitcoin. So this this can happen. I, I don't see any reason why it can't if Bitcoin fulfills its, its prophecy. Now, whether it does that or not is a debate. But once we go and get past 55K, this is when we really want to be taking selling seriously. The thing we need to do is we trade mid caps and micro caps on this channel. So please watch my mid cap and micro cap trading video. If you're going to be listening to my advice, why don't you get all the advice? Why don't you get some of these come to Jesus videos that I make that actually teach you how to do things instead of coming here looking for the hottest new coins <laughs> and poop jokes. So going into this i'm going to give you just a brief little summary on this channel we trade gaming coins why do we trade gaming coins because they do things like this they give crazy multiples they give crazy multiples because their market caps are very low okay so for example if you look at these coins on the front page this is basic crypto 101 they have giant market caps of multiple billions of dollars if you look at the coins over here we're getting stuff all the way down to 50 million dollars 30 million dollars 20 million dollars so it takes a lot less money to move these things 5, 10, 20, 50 X. So the downside of them is it takes, uh, they can go down a lot faster as well. The thing you need to understand in a bull market is we don't really see these micro caps do these huge dips until the market's really done. So for example, we go look at something that was around last market that was a, um, a micro cap kind of then. Let's just go look at Citus. So Citus kept going up and up and up and up and, and didn't really take any hit until Bitcoin was like, hey guys, I'm drunk, I'm going home. And then everybody just kind of... All right, so even if, if these micro caps are in the market, you're probably not going to see them take massive dives during a, bull, a clean bull market. So that gives you a little bit of wiggle room to get into these really high multiple investments with it's again everything in this is super low risk please read the disclaimer again that i post at the beginning of the video i don't want to spend 10 minutes talking about risk here so i'm just telling you this is all incredibly risky you have a 90 percent chance of losing your money if if not more and that's and if you're new to this probably like a 98 percent chance you're not going to make money so okay so this gives us a chance to get into these things at a much lower risk 
Okay, so that's one thing that we're looking for with these. And we are, this allows us also to make really huge multiples and get in and out. Okay, so for example, if we go and buy something, let's talk about AVAX right here. So we're, a lot of us in this channel on AVAX, it's done super duper well for us right here. But in order for us to like really make ungodly amounts of money, we're going to need to put in like a lot of money right here. Say we want to make a million dollars. We're going to need to put in like a million dollars, uh, a hundred thousand bucks right here. And then we're going to need to hold for a 10x. So we need to put in a lot of money and we need to hold, 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 hold. What we can also do in the gaming market is if we go in to this market, that AVAX situation right here, it's probably going to take a year to play out. So we're going to have to stay in AVAX for an entire year. However, in the mid cap markets, what we're going to see is this stuff 10xing left and right. And we're going to see multiple 10, 20 X's. So if we go and look at like the last run, um, when 8coin or well, let's just go look at um, Alluvium. Okay, Alluvium did really, really well last run. It's doing great this run. So if we go look at it last run, like we saw Alluvium it didn't do its 10x until late in the bull run. It was like late 2021. This is like the last phases of the bull run when it did this right here. And throughout the bull run, you're going to see <clears throat> as Bitcoin is moving up and all these bigger coins are moving up. So we're going to see this. We're going to see them doing this the entire bull, gradually moving up. And during these times, let's look at this in multiples, not uh, market caps or price of coin. We're going to see these micro caps. Coming up, and we're going to see multiple ones taking these rocket moon ships the entire way through. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to grab these rocket ships, hop off, grab the next rocket ship, hop off, grab the next rocket ship, hop off, grab the next rocket ship. We're not trying to ride one of these to a million X. Okay, that's not the strategy we're doing here. Do people do that all the time? Yes, but again, you have to remember there's massive survivorship bias in, in crypto. For every person you see that held something to a 50X, there's a graveyard of people who didn't, like an absolute wasteland. There's one per, one survivor out of a thousand, and everyone's like, oh man, why didn't I buy that coin? It's all easy when you look back at it. So understand the selling pattern that we're trying to get into right here once we go and get past that, that Bitcoin all-time high is we're trying to grab and hop in the mid caps, ride them up, and then slowly be exiting them. So let's say this is a 2X right here. We take profits here. We take profits here. We take profits here. We roll profits into, well, t well keeping some, okay? So let's say we start with um, 10K right here, all right? So at, uh, let's say let's say 30K right here. We're only in the, in the bar, bear market, you know? We take 15K out, all right? So then this 15K goes up here and it doubles again to another 30K. We take 15K out. It goes up here again, we take another 15, 20K out based on how much we've made right here. All right. And so now we have, you know, 50,000 bucks right here, 50,000, 70,000 bucks from this 10K investment. All right. And this thing right now is like 20X. So we could have left with 200,000, but we left with this. This is fine because here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the 50, 75K, put in, I don't know, 30K of it, keep the rest of it right here because you never know. And we're going to go and put that in. We're going to catch more rocket ships. We're going to do the same thing again. Now this 30K right here, is 150k okay and we're going to do this again same thing let's take out 75k so right now we, we have 100k just in pure profit laying over here which we're going to keep and invest in safe investments we're going to store that money away this is this is winnings okay we're gonna do this again and we're just gonna do this over and over and over again and what's going to happen as the market goes up eventually one of these times we're going to get caught with our pants off right here or you might just get a really you might get a really bad instinct that the market's done, which you're probably not going to get if you're new. And you might just dump all your bags right then. But the market's going to tank and then this is going to tank down with it. And so what we're going to do in our final revolution is we're going to be selling all the way up right here. Okay. And the market's going to start to tank with it. And then we're just going to start selling on the way down. Okay. And then when Bitcoin in the market is tanking, we're not going to do this revolution again. And so what happens throughout this right here, do we get maximum profits? No, we, we absolutely don't. This is, this is not maximum the crypto, stereotypical crypto gains. That's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is if we enter the market with 5% of our net worth is we're trying to double or triple that net worth. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, <clears throat> I think we might've drawn that off of there. If we have 5% of our net worth right there and we want to double and triple our net worth, we need a 20 X overall. This method right here can get us a 20 or a 30 X on the 5% of our net worth. Thus increase our net worth by two X to almost or three X in a year. This is great. This is insane. In any investing situation, this, this is a dream come true. For most people in crypto, they're going for a 20, 50 X their net worth. Never happens. 
Rarely happens, survivorship bias. And so by doing this, we're going to eat a loss sometime at the end of this market. We're gonna eat a loss somewhere along the line. This stuff's gonna go down, and then we're gonna start selling on the way down right here. And this is gonna be probably less for what we bought the coins for, or something's going on, or we just buy coins super low, so when they dump, there isn't really too far for them to dump. So I'll explain that here in a second. But then in the market, we're not gonna get caught with our pants off because we already have a store of money, and we've already been selling this coin on the way up, which is already going over to the store of money again, and then we sell on the way down, and we kinda of like break even and then take a little bit of loss on the coin. This is what I did last cycle. So when I called and said, hey, the market looks super over hot, I just basically stopped the cycles altogether. That's what I did. I didn't dump some giant gargantuan bag the size of the moon that I've been saving for six months. I did this entire way through because when we go and look at this last dump on Bitcoin, I realized to myself, there is no way to see this, this son of a bitch coming. This It's gonna go up and then it's down. I'm not gonna be able to call it and I am not going to lose a huge chunk of my money to this thing right here. I'm not. I'm just not gonna get caught off guard. So I'm gonna find some kind of way to play that game. And playing this game with micro caps to me makes sense because I never have to store. I never have to keep large amounts of money inside. I am able to get my profits and leave with profits. And when the market crashes, my pants are not fully pulled down, and I don't get rammed up the butt with a cucumber covered in sandpaper. This is how I win. And this 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 strategy right here made me a lot of money last bull run. So finally, the last thing I want to talk about is knowing sell points on certain coins. So why is it super important to know the coins you're looking at? I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna go through a few play-by-plays like last market. Now, Altura is something I'm really invested in, again, right here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big on Altura right now. Why? Look look at this chart. Look, look this, we're in that early phase of the bull run I talked about. But I, actually, I'm gonna talk about two coins. So this is gonna be the first example. So Altura right here, I got to know Altura and the founders right here. I, it's a really good NFT technology. I've talked about it in other videos. I'm not here to talk about tech right now. So. I got in right here, you know, and then people sniffed it out. And, and again, you're going to see that musical chairs thing. If coins are really low floating through the bear market, or I mean the bull market, what people are going to do is they're going to say, all right, all right, these coins pump, these coins pumped. I'm going to take my profits and I'm going to put them in other coins. This is how people operate. So they come down to the third, fifth page, go, what's next? What's next? What's next? And then you're going to see things go, keeping that in mind, knowing people are going to do that. If a coin is good and you're able to find it kind of early in a narrative, it's going to take off. And that this strategy of how to find these coins is completely covered in my microcap video. This is how to sell the microcaps. So pump, pump, pumps right here. Pretty dang cool. Pretty like I, I obviously gets sniffed out. People start pumping it. Now, people then see this thing is moving and it's good. And it goes up to right here. And let's look at the market cap of this guy. But then it skyrockets right here. And the market cap of it jumps to like 300 million or, or whatever. So what I did right here is I started selling really aggressively all the way up right here. And I left really, really way up. Overall, I like 20x my money overall from it. So how did I know how to sell here? So one, I knew why the coin was pumping. Right here, it was pumping because the coin was quality. Right here, it was pumping because the, the coin got discovered. I'm going to take profits right there regardless. I'm going to start that, that selling pattern. Then tons of influencers started coming on board and pumping the ever-living crap out of this thing. Now, how did I know when it was way too high? So what you want to do is you want to look at all the other coins comparative. It's like houses and real estate. So for example, if you're in a house or if you're on a street where each house is worth a million dollars and then one house goes to $1.5 million, oh, okay, that's, that's cool. But then it starts going to like $3 million and $4 million and $5 million compared to all the other houses. So in crypto gaming, um, the average market cap at the time for like a good project valuation wise was like 50 to 100 million at about 200 million the projects really started to slow down at 300 million they really started to get kneecapped okay you weren't seeing any projects like busting 300 million and usually when they hit 300 million or above that they all started to kind of go down and so what I did is I did the whole uh, comparison effect to other coins in crypto. And so what you're going to see right now in gaming crypto is the market cap of a lot of good projects is around $50 million. That's like the agreed on like good house price for gaming cryptos. So if we're looking at this and, and this project, uh, I'm not using Altura's example right now, but let's say we're looking at, at five games and <clears throat> four of the games have a market cap of $50 million. And then this fifth game has a market cap that's just shot past $150, $200 million. Who's the over hot one in the room? And then you need to look at the game. You need to look at past behaviors of other coins. So, for example, if we're looking at like Beam, for example, Beam is really similar to like Immutable. It's really similar to AVAX. So, based on the market cap of this, like a billion dollar market cap on Beam isn't too crazy. Like this thing has the places to go. 
um, and reach these levels right here. However, if we're looking at like something, there's a small game, I'm just going to pick like random games right here. Let's say we, we get, this is a small game right here. And we get this small game right here. And this small game right here goes well past like $150, $200 million market cap. We're going to look at all the other small games, look at their history and be like, this is a little inappropriate. We really want to be selling at those points because this thing is, it's defying gravity and the selling behavior and the buying behavior of the rest of the niche. Could it go to the moon? Yes. But again, we want to make those good, safe choices. So this is really why you want to know the coins you're getting into. You want to know why they're pumping and also look at things like this. So let's go look at our good old buddy B20. Okay, this is, this is a really good example because if you stayed in this, you just got ripped apart. So here's a coin that I made a lot of money in. But again, we have to know why we're buying coins. And this is just like the most obvious example. So if you we're around last bull run. You remember Beeple got really, really famous about this point in the bull run. This is when NFTs became like the thing. Okay, they were the, the hip thing. And this was leading into his drop of a painting. Uh, and it was an auction. So people were like, this thing's going for $100 million. It's going to go nuts. And so there was a fund that stored like 15, 16 of his paintings. And so the logic was, if this painting goes for $10 million, each of these paintings is worth at least uh, 10 million dollars each of these nfts is worth 10 million dollars thus a portfolio of 14 20 of them i forgot how much it is is worth 200 million dollars that's how people were calculating the market cap now if you knew this you saw it hit this point and you started to say okay even best case scenario this is not going to 40 dollars would be like the market cap if they were all worth 10 million dollars so you see like i'm doing a lot of like thinking right here what are people thinking? Because that's that's the main thing when you look at. What are other people thinking? Every mother effer who was holding right here was thinking, okay, the appropriate price would be $40. So there's another 2X in the tank right here. But again, people are not in this because they care. They're in it to take profits. And so what was going right here is people were thinking, all right, am I going to hold out till 40 or am I going to dump on everybody else who's waiting for 40? That was the big conundrum right here. And the date of his drop was right here. So you saw the thing drop right here. Um, actually, I think this is like the day after it peaked out because people like grabbed it right after. You saw a little dip and whatnot. So anyways, this is right around the drop and people think, okay, it's time for it to go to the moon. It's time for it to go to the moon. And it didn't, it completely collapsed right here. Now, everybody buying in this point right here, like really know who ne who Beeple was. And so the people that got destroyed right here, who bought right here were just the, the fanatics, the people that drank the Kool-Aid. Don't want to be a Kool-Aid drinker. But for the most part, a lot of people buying right here knew exactly what they were buying. The people right here just saw this chart right here going up. And they didn't know what was going on. They just saw it skyrocketing. They thought, oh, people, this, this is going to the moon. But anybody who actually knew what they were buying and knew about the coin and was following very, very, very closely knew that this was either, this was going to be around the point that we go to $40 or it's time to sell. I opted to sell. I dumped the entire bag. Okay. Now, I didn't get out at 23. I think I got out at like $18 or something like that. But I, I nuclear, when I saw this first dip right here and then it got caught, I'm like, nope, I'm done. And then I dumped all of it. This is a point right here where you really have to look at what the coin is and why it's doing certain things. This is why it's so incredibly important to know your coins. Every coin you buy is going to have big selling points. It's going to have big news of points. It's going to have um, points that everybody's like, oh, you wait for this thing. You wait for this thing. So a really good example of this is Cardano. Now, this isn't exactly the type of coin we're mentioning right here, and I'm going to take the jokes out of it. But what we saw right here is a big sell the news of point, all right? Because everybody was holding out for the Gogan update that I was going to change the world. And <clears throat> when these when these new updates and everything happen in coins, unless there's a huge influx of users or actual revenue being generated or some business, it, it means nothing. The, the, the amount of people using Crip, Cardano right here and right here, I might be wrong here, essentially the same, nobody. All right, it's not doing anything. It was just an update that everybody was like, oh. And so what people do is they crowd around these updates. And then when these, these updates hit, and so a really good rule of thumb also in crypto, if you know your coins, know why people are buying right here. This whole entire time, it was a lead up to the Gogan update. Know that people are going to sell. If, when you get to the peak of these updates or these drops, you're just better off dumping everything and moving on and trying that, that rocket ship combination. So that all in all, we've, th this video has gone a little bit longer than I want to. Those are my thoughts on selling. That's how I look at the market. That's how I look at when I'm going to sell things. And by all means, this isn't the, the one all way to sell. I'm sure there's going to be tons of people like, I sold after Becker and made more gains. Fantastic. Great. That's, that's amazing. I want a system that's going to allow me to leave with profit and not get absolutely destroyed. 
And these are all the thoughts, all the things I look at when I'm using the market that has allowed me to, after that first dip that I saw on Bitcoin, consistently leave with money in the bank and profits, lots of profits, and consistently be a survivor when that 10% that actually leaves with money in the market. And if you're watching these videos, your odds of being a survivor are so incredibly low if you're a bag holder, you're drinking the Kool-Aid, or you're following the typical crypto narratives that um, I felt I needed to make this video. Hopefully one person will listen to it and, and you'll be that one that actually leaves the market with profits. I've got nothing else to say. If you want to see my thoughts on the market a lot quicker, I don't always have time to make these videos, especially when I think the market's shifting or something like that. There's no way I'm going to make a video like, let me make a 20 minute video right away. I'm going to be posting on Twitter. I'm going to be sharing it there. So follow me on Twitter at ZSS Becker. Follow me on Instagram at 4am Becker. If you just want to see my dog, he's really cool. And that's all I got. See you in the next video. <laughs>